amount of area in the right tail, we can figure out the appropriate t value that has that amount of area in the right tail. Now the t tables have two parameters that we require. Okay? They have two parameters. Okay? Uh, the first parameter is how much area is in the right tail. Well, it's one percent, so it's zero point zero. 0, 1, okay? And also, we need our degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for a t distribution, every t, the t distribution is parameterized by the sample size, okay? That's called the degrees of freedom. So in our case here, the degrees of freedom is equal to the sample size minus 1. It's the sample size minus 1 for a single sample test, or in this case, for, for a confidence interval for a single population proportion. So in our situation here, degrees of freedom is 65 minus 1, which gives us degrees of freedom is equal to 64. So we've got 64 degrees of freedom. So what we're going to do is on our t-tables, we're going to triangulate in to see what this appropriate t-value is. Okay? Now, unfortunately, our tables, okay, albeit our tables give degrees of freedom, whoops, so, whoops, wrong, 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 wrong table, this is us here. Our, our, our tables gives us degrees of freedom going up in, going up in ones, or going up in, in units, in, in single units. But then when we get up far enough, you can see as we get up to 50 here, we start to go up in units of 10, yeah? So we don't have 64, but we do have the one closest to it. The one closest to it, degrees of freedom is 60, okay? So we'll choose 60, because 60 is only four units away from 64, whereas 70 is six units away. So we'll choose the one that's closest, yeah? Uh, so that's our degrees of freedom. So our T, our T, our appropriate T value is somewhere on this row here. How much area have we got in the right hand tail? We've got 1% or 0 0.01. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the 0 0.01 column. We're going to come down to the row that's 60. And that gives us a T value of 2.390. So our associated T value is 2.3990. So now we have all of our we have now all of our values. So our appropriate confidence interval is going to be x bar, which is fifty five thousand euros, minus the t value, which is two point three nine zero, times the standard deviation, which is fifteen thousand. So it's fifteen thousand divided by the sample size, which is the square root of the sample size, which is the square root of sixty five. And that value must be less than mu, which must be less than fifty five thousand euros. Okay. plus the t value which is 2.390 times the standard deviation which is 15,000 the standard deviation of our sample divided by the square root of 60 65 okay so let's figure this out here well you can see that we have this factor here and we also have it over here so let's just calculate this factor okay if i can find my calculator here it is here okay so what i'm going to do is 15,000 euros divided by the square root of 65 Okay. multiplied by 2.390, 2.390, gives me a value of 4,460.64, which is about 4,447. So this value here is going to be 4,447 approximately. So now we have, it's 55,000 euros minus 4,447, must be less than mu, which must be less than 55,000, plus 4,447. So, what's this? This is 55,000 euros minus 4447 gives us a value of 50,553, must be less than mu, which must be less than 59,447. And that's our confidence interval. Now, what does this look like from a scale perspective? Well, we have our scale. We have the average salaries. The average salary of the population should be, should be somewhere on a scale. We have the lower bound here, which is 50,553. We have the upper bound, which is 59,447. I should, probably should do these as open intervals, okay? Uh, but let's just uh, forget about that at this stage. Uh, and what we know is that the true population mean, we should find the true population mean between those values, okay? 90 this case, 98%, 98% of the time is our true population mean should be in within there. It might not be in there. It might be outside of them. It could be over here, or it could be over here. But it should only be in them particular positions, yeah, uh, in the left, in this left portion or this right portion, 1% of the time. Right? Oh, sorry, this is a 98% interval. So this is a 98 interval okay so it should be in it would we'd expect to find it in these tails two percent of the time but we'd expect to find it between these two values 98 percent of the time okay guys uh, once again just a key thing to keep in mind here is that when we're doing a confidence interval in this case it's a single sample of data that's been provided and its characteristics we don't know the population standard deviation we know the sample standard deviation in which case we go for the formula that has the sample standard deviation in it which relies upon a t distribution okay 
So once again, guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video was in some way helpful. And more importantly, I hope that it, uh, I hope it was in some way intuitive as well. Okay, so thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.